All right, good morning, Anatomy. Um, as I told you, I was going to be out today, and I did manage to record my lecture, and hopefully I will get it all recorded here while I'm still in my prep period. If not, I'll have to pause and finish. Um, I hope that you um, take the time to click on the links that I have in the video, I'm um, sorry, in the lecture, so that you can um, listen to the songs and watch the extra videos that I have waiting for you. So um, let's get to it. I hope that you take out some colored pens, pencils, because we are going to draw a really simplified heart together as a part of this lecture. And I do this every year with my students. Um, so you'll have the anatomically correct looking heart, and then we'll have gone through the experience of drawing a heart together and labeling all the parts. So if you have um, markers and colors, you, it's more fun to do it that way, especially red and blue. All right, so I went through these learning objectives with you yesterday, and we're gonna be focusing basically on our very first learning objective here, talking about the location, the size, where your heart is, and all the hearts and chambers and valves. And so those are our objectives. So first of all, uh, where is the heart located? It's in the mediastinum or mediastinum. And so if you remember, here's a really bad sketch of, um, so those would be your shoulders, right? And you have two different cavities where you have the lungs and this is the le um, this would be your right plural and this would be the left plural cavity and then right in the middle of that you have the media mediastinum okay and that's where your heart is located oh that's an ugly drawing um, Basically, your heart is not directly in the middle. Remember, it's about, um, you know, the sternum comes down kind of over this, and so it covers up part of the heart, but not all of it. And our lungs, actually, we haven't talked about the lungs yet, but your lung has this um, notch in it. Now, which lung would this be? You've got one lung on um, on this side, right? Your your heart's in its own little space and its own little bag, and you got a big old lung on this side. So which lung would this one be? Okay, I'll give you a minute to think about it and remember your anatomical positions. And yes, this would be the left lung. Remember, it's not the left as you see it, but it's the left of your patient. So the left lung, and then this would be the right lung. So the left lung is a little bit smaller than the right lung is because it's got this notch in it where the heart sits, okay? And your heart is called, considered to be a double pump, a double pump, because you've got a right side of the heart and a left side of the heart. So as we look at the heart from the outside, these little flaps here, um, they're also called auricles. And they'll, you'll see them on when we do our sheep heart dissection. These are the atria. So the atria are your upper chambers, and then underneath here are the ventricles, the lower chambers. So it's a four-chambered system, but we call it a double pump because basically kind of right down the middle is something called the septum, which means fence. And that divides the heart into a right side and a left side. Okay, clear that all off. And moving on. So um, here is a cross-section view of the heart. So our two upper chambers are the right atria, and this would be the left atria, right ventricle and left ventricle. Okay. And then right there is the septum I was telling you about that runs and divides the heart into two sides. So, little quiz for yourself. If this is the if the blue is the right side of the heart, where does this blood come from right here? Where does the blood come from to come into the right side of the heart? Okay? So think about it, and if you say it comes from the body, then you're right. That is deoxygenated blood that comes in from your body, goes into the right side of the heart, first the right atria, then into the right ventricle, and then where do you think it's going here? It branches off, and it goes to the lungs. Where's the blood coming from here? Coming in this direction. Hmm? That's coming back from the lungs 
and it's going to be going into the left atria, then the left ventricle, then back out, loops underneath here, and this goes out to the body. And we're going to see this over and over and over again, okay? So the atria sometimes are called the receiving cham chambers, and basically when they fill up, when the pressure gets high enough in those receiving chambers, then the pressure is lower here, low pressure here, the blood's going to flow from the atria to the ventricles on both sides. And then your big um, ventricles, those are your pumping chambers. So now that I've made a royal mess of this diagram, we'll go on to the next slide. Okay, so heart chambers, atria and ventricles. Now let's talk about the layers of the heart. We have three layers. The muscular layer of the heart is called the myocardium. The myocardium is our muscle. Myo means muscle. That looks messy. Sorry, myo equals muscle. So the myocardium is the muscular layer of the heart. The innermost layer of the heart is called the endocardium. Remember endo for inside or inner. So the endocardium, you really can't see it here um, because it's um, continuous with the inside, but it would just be this inner layer. I'm drawing it here in yellow. This is the endocardium on the inside. So if you get an inflammation of this inner layer of your heart, um, that's called endocarditis. And the endocardium is continuous with, meaning it it continues on, it, it becomes the inner layer of the blood vessels. So it's just a single layer of epithelial tissues that would line the inside of the heart, um, and it would also line the inside of your blood vessels, okay? So it's a single layer, and I should change colors here, sorry. Um, so black, um, single layer of epithelial tissue. And remember, epithelial tissue is going to cover structures, it's going to line structures, lining the inside of the heart, it's going to protect structures. And it's also significant that when we get into our blood vessels, especially our capillaries, which are our smallest blood vessels, that they're just one single layer of epithelial tissue. So that allows for diffusion of materials to go across the capillary walls. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so we have the myocardium, the muscle layer, the endocardium, the smooth inner lining of the heart. And then we have a sac that goes around the heart, which is called the pericardium. And that is made up of um, connective tissue. And so here we have a drawing that shows you the layers of the heart. Um, endocardium there, oops, I should go back to yellow because I like that color for endocardium. Endocardium there is the layer right on top of the heart, okay? The inner layer, inner wall of the heart. So this would be the, the cavity inside of the heart, okay? The blood would be in here. So then we have the myocardium. This is the myocardium, the muscular layer, and then the epicardium. Now the epicardium, um, as shown here, the epicardium is two layers together. We have an epicardium here and then an epicardium here, okay? So if you remember back to when we talked about in the integumentary system, we talked about um, linings of cavities. We had two layers, and I said, you know, remember when you used to get those balloons at Disneyland and it had um, the, the outer balloon and then the in, inner balloon, which was like over Mickey's head, okay? Well, now re imagine that this is the heart. Okay, we have an outer sac, which is what you see right there, okay? And then inside, there's an outer layer that covers the heart itself. And then there's a space in between, okay? So, the lining that covers and touches the actual heart is called the visceral pericardium, okay? Visceral, visceral, remember, viscera means guts, Visceral pericardium, also known as the epicardium, okay? So visceral pericardium and epicardium are the same thing, okay? That would be here. Visceral pericardium and epicardium. Okay. 
Then the parietal would be the outer layer. This outside layer that you see here, that's the parietal pericardium. And the space in between is gonna have serous fluid because when, um, which is gonna lubricate. So every time the heart muscle contracts, it's gonna jiggle around inside of this bag. So you want to have, you don't want the heart experiencing friction. So you have the serous fluid, which helps to lubricate when the heart jiggles back and forth. If you get an inflammation of the pericardium, you get pericarditis, which is, you know, bacterial cause or viral cause. And you would actually be having pain when your heart was beating. And so they would want to decrease that inflammation. So again, this inner layer that touches the heart, okay, inner layer that touches the heart that one that's the what is it everybody if you said visceral pericardium you're right because visceral means guts and then the outer layer of the sac that goes around that's the parietal pericardium and this is the pericardial space and you should have a buildup of fluid now when my dad had his open heart surgery to correct a blockage in a valve my dad actually had a blockage of this main valve you can barely see it here this is called the widowmaker and it's the one that brings um, oxygenated blood to the left ventricle basically the big pumping chamber of your heart well, he had a blockage of it, and so there was death of heart tissue down here in his left ventricle, which is eventually what he he died from. Um, why am I telling you this? I'm drawing a blank now. Um, oh, so he had um, the blood vessel, they didn't get a good seal on it, and so it started bleeding, and blood started filling up inside of the pericardial sac, which squished and put pressure on the heart, which made his heart not beat properly. So they had to go back in and open his chest up and do a second um, open heart surgery so that they could repair the little bleeding blood vessel so that it wasn't leaking into this pericardial cavity. And then they had to shock his heart so that his heartbeat would start um, normal. So that is a real true life story. So I said at the beginning of this lecture that we would be drawing a heart together. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw just a simple square. And you guys can all do this, a simple square. And this represents the heart. And then we're going to divide that into four chambers because the heart has four chambers. So take a second and see if you can label um, those four chambers. Now remember, this is not anatomically correct, but we want to make sure that we have right and left sides correct. So this side, is it going to be right or left? What's this side going to be, right or left? Um, is it an atria or is it a ventricle? Hmm. Think about it for a second. And if you want to pause, I'm going to give you the answer. This is the right atrium. So then the chamber below it should be the right ventricle. This would make this the left atrium. And this would be the left ventricle. So now I'm going to kind of sketch over this a little bit thicker, and I'm going to make this, I'm going to label this the septum. And then I'm going to thicken up this side here. And the more times you draw this, the better off you'll be. This is going to be the, um, the thicker ventricular wall. Because the left ventricle is thicker than the right ventricle. So now I want to draw in blood. Now if I want to get really fancy, I'm going to use what color to show the blood here. Is it going to be red or blue? Well, where's this blood coming from? This blood's coming from your body. So if it's coming from your body, it's already been deoxygenated. So I'm going to draw this as blue. So this is from the body. The name of the blood vessel that carries this blood in is the vena cava or vena cava and this is a vein because it carries blood into your heart and this circuit of blood going through is going to stay blue the whole way now I want to name my vessels I've got I'm not vessels sorry my valves I've got one valve here 
and another valve here. This first valve is an AV valve. It goes between the atrium and the ventricle. Okay, so this is actually called what? Which valve is this? See if you can think about it. It's the right AV valve, so it's the tricuspid. And on the back side of that valve are these string structures. Okay, those string structures are your chordae tendinae. I mentioned those in the lecture. They're there to keep the valve from being able to be pushed backwards. You want it to go in only one direction. Okay, so that's um, valve number one right there. Okay, valve number one is the tricuspid valve with the chordae tendinae. Now let's look down here, valve number two. What is valve number two called? Okay, well, it's helpful to remember that this blood, where does it go? It goes to the lungs and it's carried by the pulmonary. Is it a vein or an artery? Well, it's going away from the heart, so it's an artery. And so this is called, number two is called the pulmonary semilunar valve. So then blood goes to your lungs. It comes back into the left side of the heart from your lungs. And now, is it still red blood or blue blood or red blood? I just gave it away, huh, didn't I? It's red blood now. So we go this way and on out, okay? So we're coming from the lungs. What's the name of the vessel? The vessel that's carrying the blood in from the lungs is the pulmonary is it an artery or a vein? Well, it's not going away from the heart, it's going towards the heart, so it is a pulmonary vein. Okay. Passes into the left the left atrium, has to go through this valve. This valve has chordae tendinae too. The name of this valve, this will be valve number three. Valve number three here. Can you read that three there? Valve number three, what are you called? You are an AV valve. Oops, got to go to black, sorry. You are an AV valve. You are a left AV valve, and your name, you kind of have two, the bicuspid or the mitral valve. I'm going to keep talking here until my class comes in. That way I'll for sure be able to get this done. And then down here we have another valve. Class is going to start coming in, but that's okay. We have another valve down here, and <laughs> I am talking, I'm talking and making a lecture. And down here at the bottom, we have another valve. This is our fourth valve here, and this vessel that is leaving the heart here, this is going to be the aorta, and it is going away from the heart, so it's an artery. Where is the aorta going? It's going to the body. We're going to draw this again um, in class together because I, I like to do this in real time with you guys, but at least you'll have seen it once. Um, this valve is going to be the aortic semilunar valve. Okay, so this is our non-anatomically correct heart with all the parts on it. And you guys will do this again together, but you should be able to summarize your Cornell notes now um, looked back through them, and this should be their first uh, page of notes, pa first left-hand page, so I think it would be page 38, if I'm not mistaken, and um, the rest of your class time you can use to get ahead on your next section of notes or to work on your flip chart um, of the heart, okay, and I will see you in class tomorrow. Bye-bye.